This video is brought to you in part by JLC PCB. The Sentry is perfect, except for all the flaws. There are some fundamental issues that we need to solve to make it real, the first of which is balance. All of the sentries are quite top-heavy, and while the level 1 sentry is a bit more sensible in terms of balance, there's still some finagling necessary to keep it from toppling over at the first sign of a mild breeze. To solve the issue of balance, I split the design into two main assemblies, the lower base and the upper turret. The base will largely be made out of steel plates, with some 3D printed components for the more complex geometry, while the turret portion will be entirely 3D printed, so it is lighter weight in comparison. Since I started by designing the base, let's break down how I made it a bit more sane to manufacture. I split the base into a few sub-assemblies, a T-cylinder and hex shaft, a handle, front legs, hind legs, and rear feet. The core of the sentry's base is a T-shaped component into which the upper turret mounts. I added a hexagonal bore to the top and a matching hexagonal peg to this round piece, which attaches to the main yaw servo. In order to couple the base to the turret, I added a quick release pin to lock them together. There's no pin in the game model, but I think this fits nicely with the aesthetic and makes assembly dead easy for swapping out different turret heads. Now, the T-cylinder has a larger bore for another cylindrical piece, because I knew I'd be 3D printing this piece, and printing a separate cylinder would yield cleaner results. Now, since all the weight of the turret would rest on the T-cylinder, I added a hexagonal bore for a 12 by 160 millimeter steel shaft. This way, the stress on the leg connections would be steel on steel for maximum strength. Also, any extra weight I can add to the base, the better. The T-cylinder, inner cylinder, and hex shaft are all locked together with a single set screw from the rear. Now that the core of the base is largely assembled, let's move on to the legs. When I first started planning this project, I knew I would have the legs made out of laser cut steel plate, so that determined the scale of the sentry. I simplified the hind legs into two main plates, an inner longer plate that makes for the real rear foot, and an outer plate to thicken the haunch to better match the game model. While welding them together would make the most sense, I don't have any welding equipment, so they're screwed together here, 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 and here. The inner leg doesn't do much, but since it is the actual rear foot, I added some tiny serrations to give it better grip. The undeployed feet just sort of dangle near the rear. Since the game model has a needlessly large bolt holding the foot slot in place, I too added a needlessly large bolt that screws into the foot assembly and into the weird forked spacer piece between the hind legs. In order to lock the core of the base to the legs, the inner plate has a large hole where the hex shaft will go, because I added a hex shaft collar to either side. The collar tightens around the shaft, hides within the inner leg plate, and then is fastened to the outer plate for the full rear leg assembly. But we still need some front legs. I designed the front legs around simple bent steel plates. The joint has a hexagonal profile for the shaft, this way the legs can always be aligned to the right angle. Before the legs can be inserted to the shaft, we need to partially install the arms for the base handle. Then the front leg plate can be inserted before everything is fully seated. The handle is split into three main parts for ease of assembly and print strength. So once one side is in, the crossbar can be inserted into a matching hole and screwed in before the other leg is inserted. Since the leg is captured between the handle arms and the arms are now screwed together, everything is constrained in the exact orientation of the game model. But the legs aren't done yet. There's no simple way to have the little knee hinge locked at the correct angle without a lot of fuss. So I simplified it from a hinge to a permanent bend at the correct 45 degree angle. I added some round elements to the lower leg cover to mimic the hinge design, which doesn't really make sense, but uh, just don't look at it too closely, okay? Now, the front legs have what I would consider a major flaw. The hind legs in all of the sentries have distinct slots for adjusting their angle, right? Wrong. The slot would do that, but there's nothing modeled in the legs to ride in the slot. Minor graphical oversight or major modeling malfunction. Anyway, it drives me crazy that there's nothing there, so I fixed it with a comically large screw, spacer, and nut that mechanically do nothing to support the legs in my build, but aesthetically, spiritually, this screw holds the entire build together and gives me inner peace. Only one minor assembly for the front legs remains, the feet. While ball swivel feet are commercially available, there's far too much swivelage in the game model. And since that angle is too extreme for the foot industry, I had to make my own. Since a lot of stress would be put onto the front feet as well, I got some balls of steel with threaded holes and just... Oh. So since the legs are laser cut plates, I can only have straight edges, which means the tips of the legs have to be rounded down so I could add threads with the die. Now I can slide this little foot collar on, and then a nut, 
and then the balls hold everything in place. Now, since the angle of the ball foot is too acute to have a socket that mechanically holds the ball in place, I designed the foot to have a 6mm magnet to keep the feet attached. I also added some rubber foot inserts to each of the sockets for extra grip. Now, that's looking pretty good, but we're only half done. So if you're watching this video, I imagine you might have a little bit of an interest in engineering. And if you're like me, that also means you want to bring your designs to life in more professional ways. There's only one problem. Doing that requires very fancy tools, and those fancy tools cost a lot of money. Which is why I'm excited that today's video is brought to you by JLC PCB. So if you want one-stop PCB manufacturing, PCBA, industrial grade 3D printing, and now CNC services, JLC PCB has you covered. From circuit board production to component sourcing and PCB assembly, and even enclosure fabrication, you can easily complete hardware development and rapid prototyping with JLC PCB. So you don't need a warehouse full of fancy tools and equipment to get the job done because you've got JLC PCB. But are you gonna have to wait weeks or months to get your parts? No, of course not. Time is money, and JLC PCB is here to save you both because they offer the fastest 24-hour turnaround for PCB manufacturing and assembly. And to make things even easier on you, JLC PCB has an online quoting system, so you can upload your files, get an instant quote, and then start placing your orders in just a few simple steps. Let me show you how it works. I'm gonna upload the step file for this Wrangler antenna dish, choose my process, choose my material, and a few other things, hit order, and in just a few seconds, okay, so it's not actually instantaneous, but it does feel like instant gratification when you get a beautiful part in the mail and you know it's gonna be perfect every single time. But if you're worried about costs, I mean, you know the drill. JLC PCB is offering $54 worth of coupons to new users. So go ahead and sign up using my link in the description and get started building your project today. Thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Removing the digital quick release pin, we can separate the two halves of the Sentry. So let's take a look at the interface. The peg and this skirt are printed separately, not for any mechanical reason, but this would be a ton of wasted support material. And I always like to challenge myself to design without supports and more plastic waste. The peg and skirt are joined together with four screws to an aluminum servo horn. Then this mini assembly pops onto the servo spline, locking it down radially, and a single M3 screw retains everything axially. Before we move on to the rest of the design, you might have noticed that this next piece looks a little weird. If you didn't notice, you can skip ahead to the timestamp on screen. I did my best to stick to the proportions and features found in the original game design, only adjusting slight features to reduce cost and make assembly easier. One key element I tried to preserve was a lack of visible wires. This meant that all the motors and electronics would need to be housed in the upper turret, but this presents a real problem. If the sentry is going to swivel along this axis, then whatever motor drives the mechanism needs to be mounted downward, but where does it go? The game model here is just a large hinge, but since the sentry doesn't tilt at this point, I ignored it and managed to stuff a servo right here. Since the entire weight of the upper assembly bears down on this point, I mounted the servo in this aluminum frame, which adds an additional bearing at the point of contact, as well as some extra threaded mounting holes. At the rear of the servo frame, we find this support assembly that attaches to the rear housing. It doesn't really do anything, so I split it into a few simple parts. A piece that mounts to the servo frame, the first swiveling arm, a second swiveling arm that has a slot for the rectangular piston rod, and lastly, a bracket that attaches to the underside of the rear housing. The outer holes in all these pieces are slightly oversized, so that when screwed together, they should rotate and adjust freely as the turret head tilts up and down. Speaking of which, how does it do that? The servo frame and shell mount underneath a larger component I call the pitch bracket. I've screwed in a hex shaft collar to each side of the pitch bracket. On one side, this receives a hexagonal shaft that will mate with a pair of bearings in a cylindrical pillow block, which mounts to the lower half of the forward housing. On the other side of the lower front housing, I added a pass-through hole for a hex shaft that has a servo spline on one end. This hex end is secured to the pitch bracket via this shaft collar, and the other end presses onto the main pitch servo. There's a long M3 screw that secures the shaft axially to the servo, so everything stays in place. The pitch servo mounts to a separate bracket that is attached via the underside of the lower front housing. And now the sentry can tilt up and down. But we're not done yet. I hate to break it to you, but this little guy would probably simultaneously melt, fall over, and explode if it were to use real cartridges. But I still want that satisfying recoil barrel action. So how do I make that happen? 
Well, we need some kind of linear slider mechanism to draw it back and forth. So I added a tab with a hole toward the rear that connects to a link. That link connects to an arm, which attaches to a servo horn, which mates with a servo just below the pitch servo. This crank can now pull the barrel back, but in order to guide it, I added two 6mm D-profile shafts to the barrel, which can be secured with two set screws. I also added two linear bearings, which rest within this post on the lower housing. These constrain the barrel and crank slider mechanism and allow it to glide back and forth smoothly. Now we've got a complete recoil mechanism that provides clearance at the center of the barrel as well as the ability to retract safely within the housing. Mechanically, there's not a whole lot left to assemble. The front face of the forward housing has separate bezels for the LED, sensor, and barrel that simply screws onto the lower and upper pieces of the forward housing. I can attach the rear housing via four more screws at the rear and pop on the cap. Now, there are a few more components that I'm keeping secret as a surprise because this is a sentry after all. It's gotta fire something, right? We'll talk more about the electronics and how this all comes together in the next video where I build it and put it to the test. I'll see you there. Adam, Alexandros, Kynan, I salute you.